Hey there guys! So I just returned from a trip to Ireland to visit my friend who lives there. She's been living there for three years now and we finally managed to go and visit her. So today I thought we'd do a travel vlog but I thought we could try something different because I didn't take my camera with me, I just took pictures with my phone and I thought it would be maybe more interesting if I sat down and told you a little bit of the story of this trip. So if you're interested to see some nice pictures of Ireland and mainly of Dublin, then please stay tuned and you know you can just learn a little bit of stuff while we go. So first of all we went there on a Saturday because we still had work on Friday so on Saturday morning we went to the bus and we um, rode to Berlin and from Berlin we took a flight to Dublin. So we arrived quite late at night, I think our flight left at 6 p.m. something like that and then it's two hours flight and then we were in Dublin. So for that night we didn't do anything spectacular, we just went to my friend's house, we had a lovely dinner that her boyfriend made for us, it was super delicious, he's Bulgarian and a very great guy and a very great cook apparently, so that was the Saturday. Now on Sunday we didn't have great plans because I actually thought that my friend would have you know experience because other people have visited her already and I thought she would have a plan of things to visit so I had no clue what was going on in Dublin. But I had started watching uh, the TV show Rebellion that is on Netflix and um, that uh, takes place in Dublin during the um, rebellion in 1916 so I did get a few glimpses of the history of Dublin and also where those fights took place and that was very interesting so if you ever plan to go to Dublin I would recommend watching this TV show even though it's not always accurate it's very interesting and you get a little bit of a better feel for it and yeah so for Sunday we didn't have any big plans apart from me meeting my longtime YouTube friend Mika finally for the first time. I think we've been um, YouTube friends for around six or seven years now and yeah so we met for the first time. Um, so we spent the morning at my um, friend's house and then we took a little bit of a walk through the city. Now I'm just gonna show you some pictures here. Um, she lives in the kind of financial district of Dublin so that is just the area that we explored first and we saw some pubs on the way and then we also went to the theater which you know wasn't anything fancy I don't know but it was a nice walk there and you can see the weather is like pretty much Ireland appropriate so very cloudy but it was actually fine. So we had a look at the um, the river which is called Livy I think and we just walked around a little bit saw some boats and crossed some bridges and then we had to return because I actually had my little meetup date with Mika. So I took my friend with me and we went to see Mika and we met her at the Connolly station and then we went just to a small little cafe where um, she uh, um, gave us some coffee and it was just really nice. We had a, a li um, very lively debate about <laughs> political stuff which I was absolutely not expecting, <laughs> you know. Um, no time for small talk basically but it was very nice and yeah we took some pictures at the end and I very much enjoyed that. So on the way back we explored a little bit of that part of Dublin where my friend lives so I'm just going to show you the pictures. And then that night we actually went to a pub in the city center um, because we wanted to see like the traditional Irish music that they do in the more touristy parts but we actually missed the band so we just had a pint of Guinness and then we went back home. That was Sunday. So the next day was actually Monday and we had super nice weather on Monday so we decided to go hiking on Hoth. 
something like that. I still haven't figured out how to really say it. I think it's like an island or something like that um, right next to Dublin. So we took the train to Hove um, and I'm just going to show you a small clip now. And then we saw the sea for the first time and yeah. At first the weather didn't look so great, but right when we arrived on that little islandy thing, the weather cleared up so much and there was sunshine and it was so warm that I had to take off my scarf and it was amazing. So <clears throat> there is actually multiple ways you can go around this island and we took the longest path. So uh, this was maybe about 12 kilometers, something like that. We haven't measured it or anything, but just, you know, for my feeling. And so this is just a very small islandy thingy and you have the harbor and then when you go onto the, you know, the, the trail, you pass a lot of like very rich people's houses. So um, yeah, it's really weird. Um, there's like huge mansions and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, for the most part, this is just, you know, us walking around the coast and you know, seeing the sea and it was just so lovely. But the farther we got, the muddier the path got because um, there was actually snow the week that we went there, which is very rare for Ireland. And since it was melting away now that we got there, it was all very muddy and the way got really, really bad and we all ruined our shoes out there. But it was just lovely. And I just want to show you a quick little clip of the sea because I just wanted to capture that feeling. So, and now we're getting onto the muddy path. So you'll have some pictures now to show you what it actually looked like. But you can also see that the sky was so bright and there was so much sunshine and it was absolutely lovely. So uh, the farther we got, the more difficult it got because the paths actually got very small and very, um, you know, narrow. And there was one point where I had to hold on to a bush with thorns because otherwise I would have fallen into a puddle of mud and I actually ripped my finger you know because I was jumping and I, my finger caught in one of the thorns and that was very dramatic um, but it's you know it's been one week and you can't even see it anymore so it's fine um, and then there was another part of the way where we actually had to hold on to um, some what do you call it um, wire What's it called? Like what you put around prison so no one can break out. Um, I, I don't remember the English word right now, but you know, that stuff that is made for not touching. But we had to hold on to this stuff to get through the puddle. Um, so yeah, it was definitely a big adventure, but it was lots of fun and you can see the pictures. It was very well worth it. We also managed to see the last little bits of snow on Ireland, which is, as I said, very rare, so I had to take a picture of it. And then after this horrendous trip, we went into a little place and got some fish and chips because we were starving. Um, it was maybe around um, 3 p.m., something like that, at that point. And then we took the train back home. And that night we actually went to Check In, which is a Czech restaurant, which was really nice, and we had some goulash and we took some pictures of the city at night because we were in the city center again. Okay, now we're on to Tuesday and on Tuesday my friend had to go into college so we um, went with her and we uh, checked out a little bit of the, uh, you know, the inner city part walking there. We had some breakfast at her college and then we left her to do her work and explore the city. So the first place we went, obviously, was the Guinness factory. Um, the Guinness storehouse is huge. Now, I was expecting a brewery, but it turned out to be more like Disneyland or something like that. So we paid 25 euro each for um, 
entry and you come in and you're right in front of this huge waterfall and they you know show you the different ingredients that go into Guinness and they show you the techniques and when every ingredient is added and what it does and stuff like that so that was very interesting and then you also get to learn how to taste test Guinness which was also interesting but you have to queue for that and we went very early in the morning like maybe 10 a.m so there wasn't so much um, going on but i think if you're in there when it's crowded it's not worth the way to do the taste testing just um, to let you know but then there's this whole section on the Guinness um, advertising so they show you all the ads that they had throughout um, time. So the most um, well-known thing is probably the toucan and they actually designed this one because during the Great Depression they wanted something bright to cheer people up and yeah that is one of them. Then they also have um, this for example and then they have this super creepy piping um, What's it called? The piping... The piping oyster, I think it's called. Which is super, super creepy and I will try to show you a short clip of that now. And then the next thing, which was also super creepy, was the fish on the bike. Now they had this ad um, based on this quote, a woman needs a man like a fish needs a bicycle. And so they have this fish on a bike, which I'm going to show you now. So next was the part where you get to um, make your own Guinness. I don't know what the term for that is, but you know. Um, we learned that, we got a nice certificate and we actually got to drink our Guinness as well. And to do that we went up to the seventh floor of the Guinness storehouse and you have a very nice view from there. And you can see that the sky was just magnificent. It looks like it's not even real. And this is not typical for Dublin. And it was very nice. So after the Guinness factory, we took a little bit of a walk because the weather was so nice. We checked out some of the, you know, churches and stuff. We didn't go in there. We just walked around, not knowing what we were looking at, basically. We also saw the um, Christ Church, which is very famous. We didn't go in there. And we saw Trinity College. But we actually missed it. Like, I wanted to go see it because I knew that the fights in 1916 took place somewhere around there. But we went and we didn't find it because it was actually closed for that day. And no one knows why. So um, then we went to a little street where you can buy um, everything. There's like fashion stores, makeup stores, stuff like that. And I was pretty underwhelmed because I thought the only store that there is is Urban Decay. And when I looked at the pictures later on, I realized that I missed an Inglot store. Now, Inglot is one of the friends I cannot get here. At least I don't know where. Um, so I was very disappointed when I found out that I walked right past it. And even took a picture of it and didn't realize it. So yeah, that was a little bit heartbreaking. But So next we went to St. Stephen's. So next we went to St. Stephen's Green Park, which is one of the areas where the fights took place. It's a very nice small park where you have a lot of statues and stuff like that. And you can read up on them, um, you know, who they were and why they're there and stuff like that, which was very interesting. And it's super, super cute. Um, it's very versatile. You have a little bit of a lake, you have uh, like a rock garden and um, some very typical English gardening, stuff like that. And from St. Stephen's screen, you can actually look at the House of Surgeons or whatever it's called. And that is actually one of the buildings where you can still still see where the bullets hit. Now you can still see um, all the little holes in the facade. 
We finally managed to find Trinity College after that and realized that it was closed. So we were like, okay, what are we going to do next? And so we went to the castle. Now the castle of Dublin doesn't really look like you would imagine a castle. It has one medieval tower and then the rest is pretty much like, um, like a chalet, like you would imagine, you know, the um, pa palaces of Paris or something. So uh, the thing is that they had this medieval castle built somewhere in the 13th century, 13th century, and um, the British guys who governed um, Ireland, they weren't too fond of this building. So someone, I think in the 18th century maybe, it burned down, unfortunately, and so they had to build a new building, unfortunately, and that was obviously much nicer, and then the British guys were happy to rule over Ireland there. And because they didn't like to walk the couple of meters to Christchurch, they actually had a church built for them right into the tower from the medieval castle that is still there. Which looks kind of funny, but it's very interesting. So we took the tour there, which I would highly, highly recommend. If you're there, go on a tour. Don't go, don't go just in there by yourself, because with the tour you get to see much more of the castle, and I think it's only two euro more. So we actually were lucky and we got onto the last tour of the day. And we went in to see um, the foundation of one of the remaining um, medieval parts of the castle. And then in there, there's also foundations from Viking settlements that were there even before that. So you can take a look at that and just see, you know, how that all looked and felt like. I think that was very interesting. Then you can also go into that little church that they built there. It's very interesting because the castle is actually built on, um, or rather, there was a little, a uh, little, little river right there um, where they built the castle. So when they built this church they were um, worried that it might sink over time. And so they built it out of wood, uh, out of timber and just covered it so it looks like stone, looks like marble. It's fantastic. You, you don't see it until someone tells you. And yeah, so we went in there and then finally we got to go into the actual castle to see like the um, like the, the rooms that they have there now, where um, they take all important politi political guests and stuff like that, and also the presidents, um, the, uh, what is it called in English? Inauguration? I have no idea, but you know, it's just important. They still use these rooms. And so the first room we actually come into um, is the one where, um, What's his name? James Connolly. He was taken after um, the rebellion because he was actually shot twice during the rebellion. All the other um, leaders of the rebellion were taken straight to prison, but he was shot. So he got into the castle because that was a hospital at the time because we were in World War One. So they used it as a field hospital and he um, was brought into a single room there because they didn't want him to be together with all the men that fell fighting for the British king. Um, so he had this single bedroom there and they tried to keep him alive and just make him feel well enough to be shot in the prison. So that's what happened. So that was the first room and then you see all the traditional rooms that are very glorious, like beautiful there's art and stuff like that. You see the table where they supposedly signed um, that Ireland is a republic now um, and stuff like that. So as I said, please take the tour if you're there. It's very interesting and you still have time after that to go around yourself and look at the rooms. Then there was also a little exhibition on, um, I think, 19th century beauty. So I had to take a picture of that as well. I thought it was very funny.
So after that we went back home and that was Tuesday. Now on Wednesday we decided to visit the prison. Now I cannot pronounce the name. It's something like Mayhem and then the Irish word for prison. I have no idea. But that's where we went and this is where all the leaders were shot, including James Connolly. Now this is quite far outside of Dublin, so you have to take um, the tram and stuff. So uh, we went there quite early and that was the day when the weather gave up on us. It was so horrible, it was raining like crazy. The pictures don't do it justice. I had wet feet for the whole day and that was so interesting. But before we get into that, I have to share with you my favorite part of Ireland, which is the red lights. Just listen to that. Okay, now we're getting into the prison. Now this prison is also very interesting. It was built in um, the late 1700s, no, yeah, 1700s. And uh, it was closed in 1924, I think. So uh, there were prisoners there for over 100 years. And you ha actually have two parts. There is the old part that was built in like 1790 something and then you have a newer part that is very Victorian. So uh, you start off in the old part and if you imagine that people were still head there in 1920s, it's just so hard to imagine. That's not even a hundred years and they had to live in these cells. Crazy, it's just crazy. But you can definitely see how they added on to it and um, how they built new stuff into it and things. And then the newer part is the one that is very famous because it looks stunning. Um, they filmed movies there. If you watch the Rebellion TV show, you will see this prison as well because, as I said, they were shot there and also... Um, Two of the main characters are held there for a whole episode, I think. So, yeah, for a prison, this is actually beautiful. Like, the architecture is beautiful, but still, it's a very depressing place because you know that um, so many very intelligent people were held there because they were, like, um, yeah, they were rebellious and, yeah, it was fascinating but to imagine that it's not even a hundred years that people were held there is crazy um, especially for the old parts also you got to see the places where they shot all the leaders and stuff like that um, with James Connolly it's actually it's a very sad story but um, he was not well enough to be executed really so one day they just decided to put him in an ambulance drive him to the uh, prison and then there's this gate so they just took him from the gate onto a stool now he was heavily sedated um, under a lot of pain because of his wounds so he fell off the stool and they had to put him back on and they had to bind him to the stool so he would sit for long enough to shoot him, which is just crazy to imagine. And as I said, this is just 100 years ago. I just think that is so mind-blowing. I don't know. So I took a picture of the place where they shot him. Um, Another thing that was very interesting in the actual um, museum of the prison is that they showed you the mugshots when they started taking pictures of prisoners so they could identify um, you know, people that get into prison again and again. It was very interesting. They also had an exhibition on hunger strikes. So that was very interesting as well. Um, obviously it was a German doctor who invented the kind of system to force feed people, which is the most horrible thing I've ever heard. And yeah, it was very eye-opening to say the least. Now we took the tram again and went back to the city center because we wanted to go into Dublinia, which is right next to Christchurch. 
and there you have a museum on the Vikings and Dublin in the Middle Ages and there's also a small, small part on archaeology in that museum. And if you go to Dublin, I would not especially recommend this place but it's great if you have children. There were tons of school classes or, you know, in this um, museum, which made it very annoying for normal people. But I can definitely see why this is an interesting place for schools to go to. Um, yeah, so I took a couple of pictures inside, but I wasn't really... I wasn't really impressed. And then you can go up on St. Michael's Tower, which um, was 96 steps. And I actually went up there. I wasn't quite sure whether I would make it because I'm super afraid of staircases like that, like um, these metallic staircases that are just in the air and you can see through the steps. Horrible. But I made it up there. The view wasn't that spectacular just because it was raining so much, um, but I still took a couple of pictures. And then you can go through that tiny little bridge which is between the Dublinia Museum and the Christchurch which was actually quite cute. And you can also get a ticket to see Christ Church, but we weren't interested in that, so we didn't go. So next up, we went to a small little place called The Oak to Eat, which was very nice. And if you're in Dublin, and if you're, you know, in the city center doing all the touristy stuff, definitely recommend The Oak. It's very cute and the food was okay. And we actually paid very little for what we got. Then we went again to Trinity College because we wanted to see Trinity College and we arrived there at 2.10 p.m. And the last tour was 2 p.m. So we missed the last tour of the day, which I was very, very mad about. But we still decided to go see the library there and the Book of Celts. Now, this is also very expensive for what you get. I think we paid 14 euro each and this is just one room basically where you get a lot of information about old books, old bibles, stuff like that. So if you're interested in that it's probably great but yeah and then you get one room which is the library and that's it. Now I think it's very interesting if you take the tour, if I understood it correctly it's actually students that do these tours, like students that study at Trinity College. And they show you also a little bit more of the other parts of Trinity College. But since we missed that it was kind of a waste of money. But we wanted to see old books and the weather was so bad we just wanted to be inside somewhere <laughs> so yeah. Um, you can also see a very old harp. It's actually the oldest harp that they have. You may know that the harp is the symbol of Ireland and I think it's the only country that has a instrument, a musical instrument, as um, their sign, basically. So yeah, this is the oldest harp that they found. So now we're back outside, back in the rain, and I decided that the last place we could look at was the GPO, the General Post Office. Now if you know anything about the rebellion, you may know that this was, I think, the last post that they held before they had to give in to the British. Now you have to imagine it was about 1,500 people against 20,000 British um, military guys. So. At one point they just had to give up because it was absolutely hopeless. But it is said that many of the leaders actually knew that and they just wanted the blood sacrifice to kind of stir the other Irish people to rebel against the British. But yeah, in these pictures you can also see the needle. I have no idea what that is. Supposedly it's something important that you take pictures of in Dublin. So then we went to the post office, which I would have loved to really go inside, but the museum is actually another 14 euro. And we were just at that point where we were like, okay, we saw the prison and we saw the castle. Now, if we go into this museum, we won't learn anything new. We heard everything basically. So we decided not to go in to keep that for when we come back to Dublin one day. But we went into the front part that is actually a post office still. So you can still buy stamps and stuff. 
So we had a little look around, we decided against the um, museum and went to a store that is right next to it because my boyfriend was like, oh well, they sell um, postcards there and I was like, yeah, they sell postcards there but they also sell books. So we went into that store and I uh, got a couple of books but I just quickly wanted to show you. The first book I got is Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman, which many people liked, so I think I'm gonna like it. And the other one that I'm super excited about, and I actually already read the first 10 pages in the post office there, is Almost Love by Louise O'Neill. And uh, this just came out, so it was a little bit expensive for what it is, but I really wanted it, and yeah, so I got it. So then that night we actually went to two more pubs. We first went to the Ferryman to have dinner there, which was very nice. I had some pasta there with um, some kind of a pumpkin squash, whatever. I don't quite know, but it was so freaking good. But it was like a starter, so I wanted more, but it was so good and very expensive. But yeah, that was very nice. And after that, we went to another pub, but I don't quite recall the name right now. And we had some drinks there. Or maybe that was wrong. Maybe the Harbour Master. We ate at the Harbour Master and then we went to the Ferryman. That's how it went. That's how it went. Okay. So yeah, I just took a picture of this table, which was actually a sewing machine, which was kind of cool. And that was basically it. The next day we just had breakfast and went back home. When we were at the airport back, we actually went into Boots quickly. So I wanted to show you the three things that I got there because I just picked up some things that I can't get here. The first thing were these Fleur de Force and Eilor um, lashes. La lashes. <laughs> these are the Simply Fleur and they're very short, which is great because I have fitted eyes and long lashes just look ridiculous on me. Then I got, obviously, the Collection um, Lasting Perfection Concealer because everyone raves about this. But I'm not quite sure about the color because this is cool medium and I am warm toned and light. But this was pretty much the only color they had, so I just grabbed it. And then I got the Berry M Illuminating Strobe Cream because my friend Mika is raving about these all the time. And I got this in the pink color. Is there a name to that color? Oh yeah, it's frosty pink because I have a lot of golden colored ones already. And the bluish one that Mika has, I was very honest with myself and I told myself, no, I'm never gonna use that. So this is the one I went with and I think it's quite pretty. I hope it shows up a little. It's very, very subtle, but great for every day. And because it is so subtle, you can actually really apply it just like that. You don't even really have to blend it out, which is kind of fun. So I know this video is like 700 minutes long and just let me know whether you've enjoyed this or whether you prefer the videos where I just put in the clips and the videos and you just can watch it to some music. Let me know what you think. I am very thankful if you watched this to the end. I hope you learned something new. I hope you're really interested in Dublin and Ireland now and I want to share with you the one Irish sentence that I've learned during my stay there because I'm very bad with I'm very bad with accents. I have quite an American accent just because I watch a lot of TV and a lot of YouTube that is American English. But I learned one sentence there, which is I love it. <laughs> so that would be all. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, leave a like or a nice comment. I always appreciate those. And if you subscribe, I will talk to you soon. Bye.